السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وبعد uh, It's always a pleasure to connect with the word of Allah We ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to allow us to learn from the Quran what we don't know and to help us remember from it what we may have been made to forget We ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to put the love of the Quran in our hearts and to make the light of the Quran the light that we see our uh, life and existence with I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects us with the barakah of the Qur'an and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to bestow his favor upon us. Alhamdulillah, we're, we've continued uh, with the daily tafsir, the tafsir of Surah Al-Mulk. And we're more than two-thirds of the way through the surah. This surah, as the Prophet sallallahu said, as we've mentioned before, is 30 ayah, 30 ayah. That these 30 verses are verses that will intercede and speak on behalf of the person who contains them in his heart, recites them each and every day, has become a sahib, a companion of this chapter of the Qur'an, that it's a part of his life, his framework of life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it so for us and may uh, the, the blessing of the teaching of this surah uh, uh, reflect on our children and our generations to come. Allahumma ameen. Today we're studying a very powerful verse. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse number 22. Uh, verse number 22, Allah says, then is it that he who goes along in life with his face pushed to the ground, close to the ground, looking down at the ground, looking down at their feet, mukibban, uh, mukibban as, as in bent over, they only see what's at their feet. Ahda, can that person be more led aright, be more guided, have more truth to them? Then the one, أَمَّنْ يَمْشِي سَوِيًّا عَلَى صِرَاطِ مستقيم. Then the one who walks upright on a straight path towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a powerful, powerful ayah and it has a lot of metaphor and imagery in it. The first imagery, of course, is that we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks a rhetorical question that a conscious heart should already know the answer. The answer, of course, is that the one who is upright, standing and facing the world, can see all around them what's right, left, above, beneath, is a person who will surely know more about what life is all about than one whose face is only looking at their feet. And when we talk about mukib in the lugha, in the Arabi, mukibban ala wajhi, this word, this, this statement, it means someone who is concerned only with themselves. They only care about their little place of this earth, their little place in life, their, their job, their family. They don't care about what extends past them. Where my feet are is all I'm concerned about. I don't care about other things. Um, so this, this is important. Mukibban ala wajhi, the one who is looking down is a self-centered person is a person who has no reflection of what is around them. How did this surah begin? What does Allah ask us to do? He tells us to look above and to look beyond and to look Look once and twice into this multiverse, into the universe, all that is around you. And you will see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's magnificence and mulk is vast. It's more than just you. And whatever you care about in life, whatever you think is yours on this earth, is insignificant. This same kind of ayah, an allusion to it, is also found in Surah Taha, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says to the people, the people of Quraysh, uh, to look beneath them, that Allah is the one who is the creator of the earth and the heavens above. And He begins with the word Al-Ard, before the heavens, because they were only concerned about the earth, where we live. We don't know what's up there. But in our age and time, in our consciousness and spirituality as Muslims, we must go beyond that. You must look to Al-Afaq. You must look to the horizons. And that's what all the Prophets of Allah did. Why did the Prophet ﷺ ascend the mountain of Nur, climb all the way to the very top, the highest peak in Mecca? 
Because he looked beyond him. He didn't look just at what is beneath his feet. Sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. And that becomes a very central theme to the blessing of this surah. You can actually say that this ayah is really the theme of this surah. That mankind, those who have given little attention and little regard to that which is beyond them, how can they ever be guiders to themselves and others in life? In fact, as sirat al-mustaqim is known by being upright and looking about you, considering and thinking and deliberating. And that has always been the way of the prophets of Allah. Ibrahim would point to the people, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَكَذَلِكَ نُرِي إِبْرَاهِيمَ مَلَكُوتَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ When Ibrahim came to faith, Allah says that we showed Ibrahim the kingdoms of the heavens and the earth. He began to look and see that there is something greater. Uh, Allah ends Surah Ali Imran by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying to us, uh, fi khalqi samawati wal ard. Those of faith, they deliberate with their thoughts about the creation of the heavens and the earth, and they come to the conclusion, Rabbana ma khalaqta hadha batila. Our Lord, you did not create this for not for no reason. Subhanak, you are the glorious one, O Allah, uh, and, and save us from the punishment of hell, lead us to the straight path. We heard a caller calling to truth, so we have come to believe. Ahda amman yamshi sawiyan sawiyan ala sirat mustaqim. Sawiyan is a very interesting word. It means to be upright but straightforward, and it means to be standing tall. It means you are uh, in a place of moderation, and that's where uh, you know uh, you get a lot of words that mean example or the peak of example. And the Prophet ﷺ is al-uswa al-hasana. He's the peak of examples. Uh, he's the one who is the most upright amongst us sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So to be opposite to looking down at the ground is that you are looking about you, not after your needs alone, but the needs of everyone that surrounds you in life. And therefore you're a guardian of the earth. You're a guardian for its animals. You're a guardian for its flora. You're a guardian for its people. You care for the young and the old, the, the Muslim and the non. Everything that surrounds you leads you to perfecting that relationship of your humanity, which is perfecting your Islam and submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, this is one of my favorite verses in the Quran. أَفَمَنْ يَمْشِي مُكِبًّا عَلَىٰ وَجْهِهِ أَهْدَىٰ أَمَّنْ يَمْشِي سَوِيًّا عَلَىٰ صِرَاطِ مُسْتَقِيمٍ We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who walk the path, uh, you know, uh, the center of it, close to the footsteps of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and that we continue on that path until it leads us to Jannatul Firdaus, so we can accompany him. Wa wa sallim wa zid wa barik ala Sayyidina wa Habibina wa Nabiyina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim Subhanakallahu wa bihamdika shadwa la ilahi la anta astaghfiru wa tubu laik I hope you'll join me again, inshaAllah, as we continue to discuss Surah Al-Mulk in our daily tafsir. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.